ARE Podcast, episode number 56. Welcome to the Welcome to the ARE Podcast. ARE Podcast. Where it's all about encouraging and inspiring you today so you can fulfill your dream of becoming a licensed architect tomorrow. And now your host, David Doucette. Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of the ARE Podcast. My name is David Doucette, joined as always by our co-host, Eric Corey Freed. Eric, how are you? Hi, everybody. How are you? Does anyone call you just Eric Freed, or do they always refer to you as Eric Corey Freed? Uh, sometimes they call me Big Nose, but um, it's usually Eric or all three names. <laughs> or all three but names. Nobody, nobody ever calls me Eric Freed. That's like, that's I wouldn't even know how to answer that. So it's like Frank Lloyd Wright. Nobody says Frank Wright. They say Frank. Thank you, right. Yeah. yeah. Nobody does that. Um, all right. So we got another micro uh, podcast. Uh, we're really enjoying this uh, micro format, as I'm sure you guys are too, because if you've been following us for any amount of time, you know, Eric and I like to go on tangents and and can babble with the best of them. And, and we're, we're both gifted with the gift of gab. Um, but these focus, I mean, these force us to, you know, focus and, and be clear in our, on our thoughts and our discussions. That's what we're going to continue to do today. And this episode is, um, how did we title it? Uh, I'll get, let you give the title, Eric. Why is the breakfast room? Uh, well, maybe, no, maybe it's, uh, what side of the house does the breakfast room go on? Right. Maybe that's what, a better title. Yeah. What side of the house does the breakfast room go on? Again, we're going to keep this under 15 minutes. I'm watching the clock. So what is this one about? What, what side of the breakfast house does it go on? What does it matter? Why do I care? Why, what is it, what's up with this obscure topic? Let me, uh, tell me. Well, what we've discovered in, in working with thousands and thousands of these candidates is that they tend to focus on the information that's not there as opposed to the information that is there. And so one of the questions that I like to throw out to them on the, on either the free coaching calls or the one-on-one -on -one coaching that we do is I'll say, what side of the break, you know, what side of the house would the breakfast room go on? And the responses are always something like, well, what kind of house is it? And what climate zone is it in? And, um, you know, uh, what's the house made of? And, you know, it's always, they're always fixating on what's not there. And then I say, I've given you all the information you need to answer that question. What side of the house does the breakfast room go on? And then they usually end up getting frustrated and say something like, well, that's not a fair question. And some of you listening know where I'm headed with this, but some of you don't. And, um, and, and that's really where it started, that idea of like, you're going to have to do more than just read the question. You're going to have to apply some common sense here. And are we looking for um, a, a longitudinal, uh, you know, coordinate or are we looking for like me as the candidate? If you ask me that question, first off, it's not enough information for me. And second off, I didn't read that in my study. Like, where do I get that information? Where is it? What book is going to tell me which side of the house the, the breakfast room is supposed to go on? Yeah, I mean, one of my one of my candidates said, "What page in the AHPP am I going to find this information?" I'm like, "It's not. You're not going to find it in the AHPP, the Architect's Handbook. It's not in there. You got to use your brain here a little bit." And so, if you change the focus off of what's not in the question, and instead just focus on the one or two bits of clues that are in the question, it's a pretty simple question. What side of the house does the breakfast room go on? Well, there's only two clues in that question. The first one is house. And the second one is breakfast room. And uh, what time do we normally eat breakfast? In the morning. Well, where is the sun in the morning? Well, it rises in the east and sets in the west. So I've given you everything you need to answer the question. So the answer is the east side of the house. I didn't connect the dots for you. I left the question, you know, pretty, uh, pretty. I think pretty straightforward. But, but it wasn't like what's two plus two. What side of the house does the breakfast room go on? The answer is the east side. Why? Because it's a breakfast room and we eat breakfast in the morning and the sun rises in the east in the morning. You, you're going to have to make those kind of extra leaps in order to pass these tests. In playing devil's advocate or, or let's say the questioning candidate, right? 
Um, I'd say, well, it depends. Like you said, Eric, it's not a fair question. It depends. It doesn't depend. The sun rises in the east. That doesn't depend. It does that every day. Pass or fail your exams, by the way, the sun is still going to rise in the east the next morning. So it doesn't right. depend. And also, as as we do, we tie it to our own experience. Well, in my house, it's on the west. So right. the breakfast room must go on the west because that's what I'm used to. But it's not about me. And that's what you continue to say. Right. There's Yeah, there's, th- there's three very, very common responses to this. The first one is, well, this one time in band camp, I put I put a breakfast room on the west side of the house. And it's like, yeah, OK, but that doesn't make it right just because you did it. <laughs> so get out of your own head. Another time, um, you know, uh, they'll say something very anecdotal, like, you know, I had an uncle once and he he liked to eat his breakfast in the dark. So I knew that the sun rises in the east and I deliberately put it on the west so it would be dark for him. It's like, OK, well, that's bizarre but all right and then the third the third common one is um why don't you residential so how am i supposed to know that's unfair how am i supposed to know that i don't do residential so you don't need to do residential to know that the sun rises in the east and that we eat breakfast in the morning i think that's the thing and so if you go in with that mindset of it's all about me or um you know, this is an experience test and therefore it's unfair. They're testing me on things that aren't part of my narrow experience. You're not going to do well on these tests. You're going to struggle. I'm going to add a number four, as you just gave me that list of three. Number four, I'm going to say, well, I don't eat breakfast. So it doesn't matter where it goes. (laughs) That's perfect. Yeah. I don't eat breakfast. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, what do they call it? Um, Fasting, intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, right. (laughs) But, yeah. you know, and, and there's a train of thought and there's a logic to the simplicity in all of this in much like the question of, well, where do we put the dining room, right? Same kind of logic. When do we eat in the dining room? At dinner, you know, the sun setting in the west. So we, we put it on the west so we can see the sunset, you know, and it could be like, well, I prefer to eat my breakfast in the dining room. Go for it. But that's not what we're talking about here. In, in the same kind of thing, you have an artist studio. Where do you, where do you put the, the glazing? North facing, right? So it's not direct sunlight. So you get the nice indirect light into the artist studio. I mean, these are things, you know, I don't, they're not quite common sense, but as architects, I think they kind of should be actually. And, and again, they're not necessarily things you can go to page 22 of some book necessarily to see it as simply spelled out as as what we're saying here we um david and i had a guy in the coaching group and he thought he was smarter than everybody else and so he said yeah but what if the what if the house is in antarctica and uh i said well first of all that's weird secondly nobody lives in antarctica and third that you know that wasn't the intention of the question like if you want to play semantics we can play semantics all day long but all you're going to do is burn through time that you don't have on the test you know they're talking about North America because it's a North American test. Just get over yourself and stop trying to prove how smart you are and just shut up and answer the question. That's basically what you got to do here. And um, yeah, what if it was in Antarctica? Well, I guess six months of the year it would be dark at breakfast time and six months of the year the sun would be up all night. That's what would happen. But we're, that's, not a, that's not a normal, <laughs> healthy way to think about this test. Okay, so then... I'm listening to what you're saying. Uh, This is making sense to me. There's a part of me that still doesn't agree, right? But how how do I train my brain to to simplify it? To be like, oh, okay, Eric, I see. I mean, sun rises in the in the east. That's where I should put the breakfast room. Like, like, how do I how do I get over that if I'm still struggling with it? That's a great. That's a great question. And so there's several techniques that we do in the coaching that we walk this, the, the candidates through. One of them is don't take the test as yourself, right? Take the test in, in the role that, that you're supposed to be playing for the test. So if you're taking practice management, don't take the test as yourself, but rather take it as the principle of a firm. If you're taking project management, don't take it as yourself, but rather take it as a project manager. And ideally, a project manager that maybe you've had a great experience with, a mentor, if you, if you will. Um, that's, that's one way. Number two is don't think about it in terms of your own weirdness, because you've probably been spending most of your life cultivating your own brand of weirdness. Instead, think of this very much 
like a textbook exam, almost like the driver's test. So when you went and took your driver's test, uh, you tried to answer based on, well, I wonder what everybody else would answer, right? That's the way to answer it. And the same is true with these questions. That's what NCARB is really testing you on is standard of care. So don't answer as the way you and your weirdness would answer it. <laughs> Instead, answer it. If I were to ask 100 architects this question, what would 99 of them say? That's, that's how they want you to answer it. So you can do a very free word association. Breakfast means morning. Morning means sun coming from the east. That's all you need to do. You don't need to like overwork or overthink these things. The driving test actually is a good analogy. And I was just thinking like the school zone, right? It's 15 miles per hour in a school zone. Now, I might like to drive 25 miles an hour in a school zone. That doesn't matter. Um, the fact is, it's 15 miles per hour and that's what it is, you know? So to your point about when we take these tests, you know, don't take it as us or me, take it as your project manager. Um, much in the same way, as we say too, our own experience, it can be helpful, but it doesn't matter. Where I have my breakfast room in my house has no bearing on the question of where do we put the breakfast room in the house? It has no bearing on my personal experience, has no bearing on whether I choose to eat breakfast or not, or whether I choose to eat it in the dark, it has nothing to do with that. We just have to understand breakfast, morning, sunrise, dining room, west, sunset. It's just, those are just facts we have to accept. And if we choose to fight those, then that gets into a whole different mindset issue. Yeah. And, and, you know, we have a, we've encountered a lot of stubborn types on the test where they want to prove NCARB wrong and they'll show NCARB. Well, they're not going to show NCARB anything because the test is the same for everybody. They don't have a version of the test for stubborn people, or they don't have a version of the test for, you know, free thinking weirdo people. They, it's the same version for everybody. So believe me, I encourage you to be as weird as you want to be. But when it comes to this test, you have to think in terms of it is a textbook exam looking for textbook answers. It's really designed for a candidate with about three years experience. And if you have more than that, you're going to you're basically going to definitely overthink these questions and waste a lot of time and, and really t talk yourself out of the right answer. We got a couple minutes left. And one thing I want to mention is, is yes, textbook, to, textbook exam. It's an AIA based exam. However, I also want to just say that it's still based in reality. It's still based in the real world, albeit a, a bit idealized, right? This is, it's not removed from our necessarily daily practice. It's not removed from what we do uh, as architects. It's just kind of an idealized way, right? Ideally, we want the breakfast room on the east side. It's, you know, it's not removed from reality. The reality is many houses have that for exactly that reason. So I think it's important to not, you know, associate textbook with that's not how we do things in the real world. It's just textbook, but idealized and not really so much uh, based on our own personal experience. Um, I think with that, we're, we're just under 15 minutes. So I want to end it there. Um, Eric, thank you so much for the breakfast room. And hopefully now you guys can answer the dining room as, as we talked about before. So not only did you learn where the breakfast room goes, you learned where the dining room goes and you learned with the artist studio and the north facing windows and all that good stuff. On behalf of Eric, my name is David and we will see you guys on the next Airy podcast. Thanks for listening to the A.R.E. Podcast. Be sure to visit architectexamprep.com and check out our other podcast episodes, video tips, and the A.R.E. blog. Remember to plan, practice, and pass.